Hello and welcome back to the Life Without Envy web workshop. This is episode two, Is There a Shelf Life on Perseverance? In the last video, I told you about this persistent thought that I've been having about how I've been at this for a while now, 15 plus years. I feel like I should have more readers, more fans, more followers by now. And we also talked about how underneath that thought, there is a sense of entitlement that I need to deal with. There's this notion that, well, I, I put the work in and this is precisely how I am meant to be rewarded for that work. We have to recognize the entitlement encoded in this equation if we want to unplug our sense of fulfillment from external factors. From a purely creative standpoint, the question of how long one should persevere is not a productive one. If you are a quote unquote real artist, you derive enough satisfaction from your work in and of itself to continue doing it. And if you stop doing it, chances are you were mostly interested in the work for the recognition you were hoping to receive for it. We see this with people who say they want to become authors, but they hardly ever actually read books. I know you've met people like this. I sure have. They just talk about how clever they think their own ideas are. It's nobody like that is watching this video, of course. But the point is, you decide how long you are going to persevere. And perseverance will feel lighter and easier if you answer any pouty self-talk with productive counterthoughts, which we worked on in the last video. Am I going to give up writing? Of course not. But there is the business side of creativity to consider. So will I ever give up trying to publish with big four publishers? Maybe. I'm using the phrase giving up here, but I'm actually talking about pivoting. There's a huge difference between giving up and knowing when to pivot. You have to ask yourself, is this ever going to happen in the way I've envisioned it? And what if it doesn't? As I see it, we have three options. Number one, give up. Of course, you wouldn't be watching this video if this were an option for you. It seems to me that most people don't outright decide to quit, they just sort of let their goal fade out. And when they think back on it, years later they tell themselves it just wasn't realistic or they weren't good enough, which, you know, may or may not be true. Or it may be that they didn't cherish that goal as hard as they could have in order to succeed. But, you know, that's their business. Two. Persevere with full understanding that you may or may not ever get what you want. You can go for it and be quote unquote realistic, but if you've been at it for years and it's getting to the point that you feel too discouraged to continue, consider option three, which is pursue the same or similar goal in a new way. That's what I mean by pivot. So keep at it is the only advice you ever really need unless persevering is making you miserable. Let's get meta and use my YouTube channel as an example. I have promised myself that I'm going to post the most insightful and actionable content I can come up with for one full year. At the end of that year, if these videos of only a few dozen views a piece and very little in the way of engagement, then I may consider other ways of sharing this content. Or maybe I'll have said everything I had to say and it'll be time to go back to fiction writing exclusively. I will persevere, but I will also adjust my course if I feel like my time and creative energy could be used more effectively in other ways. Now it's your turn. Have you been pursuing a very specific career route for years and feel like you're making very little headway? Do you feel stuck between what you want for yourself and your creative career and your creative life and the reality of the situation? First of all, I want you to recommit to your creative work no matter what that looks like for you today, next year, 10, 20 years down the line. Whether or not you make even a single cent on your work and how much visibility your work has is not relevant in this first step. You are never going to give up doing what you love and making what you make. Really sit with that. 
breathe it in. Let yourself feel this recommitment in every cell in your body. You can even write yourself a letter or note articulating your commitment so you can take it out and read it over whenever you feel like a failure. And you're not, by the way. Here's the second part. If you feel frustrated that you are not moving forward, that you're not even achieving the baby steps, and you feel like you've been at this for long enough, then it may be time to pivot. For instance, if you've written a novel and you've been trying for years to find an agent, you can either shelve your manuscript and write another one or get your manuscript edited so you can publish it yourself online. Here's another example. Recently, I was talking to a screenwriter who promised himself that he'd quit as soon as he found his name attached to three bad movies. That might sound arbitrary to some people, but for others, it'll seem sensible. That's why I'm saying I'm giving myself one year to see if I can feel like I'm really connecting with my readers on YouTube. It's actually the healthiest, sanest thing to say, I'm going to pursue X, but only to such a point. Sometimes imposing a deadline on your dreams may be helpful, and in other cases, it won't make sense to. You have to use your intuition on this, and the more you use it, the easier it is to tell between your inner knowing and your inner Eeyore. Now I want to introduce you to my friend Becky Mahoney, who is a novelist and podcaster who I know from various writing circles in Boston. Becky is one of the most admirable writers I know. In fact, I think I admire her more than anyone else I know, and I know a lot of really amazing writers. And the reason I admire her so much is because she is, not only is she a Rejectorama master champion, which you win Rejectorama by staying in the game, right? But she's also an expert at ego management. And I'll tell you how I know this. When you are writing and writing and writing and submitting and submitting and submitting and you you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Meanwhile, you have all of these friends and acquaintances who have like one book launch after another. Can you imagine how hard it is to keep showing up and celebrating your friends' successes when you know that you are just as good a writer as they are? That takes a really strong, generous person and Becky is that person and that's why I admire her so much. So I sent Becky my notes on this video and asked her for some extra insights to share with you. So Becky says, it's pretty hard on the ego to keep throwing yourself at a closed door. What keeps me working first and foremost is reminding myself that I am not always a reliable narrator of my own experience. I think creative people are especially at the risk of creating a narrative around their failures, and as a person with anxiety, I tend to double down on those unhelpful thoughts. That I'm the least desirable quantity in publishing, that everyone wishes I'd get the message and quit already, and so on. And I find those thoughts are the worst when I sit with them by myself. Just like it's important to find friends you can share work with, it's just as important to find friends you can commiserate with and who can give you a little reality check if necessary. And it's important to note that not everyone is going to be good at this, but that doesn't mean that what you're feeling is wrong or that they don't care about you. Also, as Camille said, sometimes the way to keep your enjoyment intact is to pivot, and rejection can be a unique invitation to try out those weird, ambitious ideas you were sure wouldn't succeed. You can't control what sells, but you can keep your work exciting, fresh, and rewarding. Oh, and a quick side note about pivoting. Sometimes pivoting means adding a new creative endeavor or skill to your repertoire rather than moving away from whatever it is you first love to do. Becky's podcasting is the perfect example. You can listen to her audio drama at www.thebridgepod.com. Speaking of Eeyore, I have one more thought about failure to share with you. If you do decide to pivot, don't spend any energy feeling like everything you've done up to now has been a waste of time. It hasn't. Own your experience. Because guess what? Our failures, everything, what we perceive to be our failures and what we perceive to be false starts, those are actually the things that are directing us towards future success. We just can't see it right now, right? Did you come up with any insights in your journal response to this video? If so, I would love to hear them. I'd love to hear what pivoting might look like for you. If you leave a comment below, everyone else can benefit from your insight, so please do share. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.